Hello, I'm Dr. Brian Cole, Professor and Vice Chairman of the Department of Orthopedic Surgery at Rush University Medical Center. And I'm going to speak to you about the outcomes of biocartilage for the treatment of chondral defects of the knee, and also provide some background to you on how biocartilage may fit into your treatment algorithm when managing patients with articular cartilage disease. I think it's important to understand that there's more than one right answer to manage our patients. Said another way, we can get it right by applying different technologies based upon defect location, size, patient, and organic patient-specific factors. What we see, however, is that there's over 100,000 procedures performed to date that involve marrow stimulation with or without biocartilage or autocart as we speak today. Microfracture has a long history of providing good outcomes when performed correctly with responsible adherence to the rehabilitation. In fact, many studies show return to sport rates in excess of 80% at one year. However, one of the challenges with marrow stimulation is if not performed correctly, if patients weight bear early, they have changes in the subchondral bone, developing subchondral edema and other, as well as clinical outcomes may deteriorate over time, so we're always looking to do better with this treatment option. We've largely gravitated away from the microfracture all towards drilling. We've learned that creating vascular access channels using a drill atraumatically at a depth of six to nine millimeters can provide access to MSCs and improve upon the host response without creating a fracture environment at the level of the subchondral plate. We've also looked at this clinically. In 68 patients comparing 34 of those who had an awl compared to 34 who had a drill at three years, we showed that at six months, the drill was better than the awl in terms of patient reported outcomes, including the IKDC, CUS, and SF12. What was equally stunning is that the revision rate when we compared the awl versus drilling was 41% in the all group and only 17% in the drilling group. Biocartilage is an adjunct to marrow stimulation. It involves the use of particulated allogeneic cartilage that's aseptically processed with a five-year shelf life. We mix it into a paste with autologous fluid. We have shown in collaboration with Lisa Fortier at Cornell University that there is retention of extracellular matrix, including type two collagen, and growth factors. In our first robust pivotal animal study, we looked at five horses with two defects in each knee, and we compared microfracture with or without the addition of biocartilage. Second look arthroscopy was performed at two, six, and 13 months. We also looked at gross MRI, micro CT, and histology at serial follow-up. This is a representative second look arthroscopy in an animal that underwent microfracture compared to a second animal who underwent biocartilage augmentation of that microfracture. And you can see improved macroscopic appearance as we go from two to six to 13 months. Objectively, when we looked at our data, we showed that the overall repair scores at 13 months were superior in the biocartilage group compared to microfracture alone. We also showed that our MRI was superior in addition to the fact that patients with biocartilage had improved type two collagen staining. The technique itself is relatively straightforward. It involves a dual syringe system that allows us to mix the autologous fluid with the biocartilage and then inject it using the orthopedal delivery system. This is an open case example of a patella. We create vertical walls. We violate the calcified layer using a 15 blade followed by a sharp curette. And then we place our holes sequentially around the lesion spaced two to three millimeters apart using the power pick. The defect is then filled just below the surface and we augment over the fill with fibrin glue. Preferably, we like autologous fibrin glue. We know that the adherence is excellent. We also know that it can provide autologous growth factors. This is a different example of a femoral condyle lesion showing that this technique can be performed arthroscopically. This is an arthroscopic view showing implantation followed by a second look at 12 months with excellent hyaline-like cartilage formation. So, how do these patients do clinically? We recently, in arthroscopy, published the clinically significant outcomes following the treatment of focal cartilage defects of the knee with microfracture that was augmented with biocartilage. The purpose of this study was to determine the early term outcomes following microfracture that was augmented with cartilage allograft extracellular matrix, otherwise known as biocartilage, to treat our patients who had symptomatic focal cartilage defects. It's a level three prospective cohort study. It involved 48 patients. There were eight surgeons at 80 institutions. The follow-up was at three, six, 12, and 24 months. We looked at traditional PROs. We looked at clinically significant outcomes, failures, and complications, and the MRI was offered at two years. We included patients with outer bridge grade three or four defects, greater than one square centimeter with stable ligament exam and menisci, and age less than 55 and BMI less than 35. 
There were a number of traditional exclusion criteria as you see here, bipolar defects, workers' compensation status, they could not be malaligned, they could not have failed a previous cartilage resurfacing procedure, they have to be realigned within six months or more, they cannot have an active joint infection or chronic disease. The age at the time of surgery was in the neighborhood of 31, plus or minus 10. 77% of these patients were male. Better than half of the defects treated were the patellofemoral joint, although clearly we included femoral condyle lesions medially and laterally, and even the tibial plateau. Our PRO compliance at six months was 81%, at 12 months was 73%, and at two years was 48%. We determined that all joint-specific and function-related PROs significantly improve compared to baseline at 3, 6, 12, 18, and 24 months. We showed that the MARCS activity scale showed a significant decline at two years, although our PROs remained consistently high even at 24-month follow-up. We also showed that the percentage of patients achieving the clinically significant outcome, as defined for microfracture, at two years was 90% for MCID, or the minimally clinically important difference, in 85% for PASS, or the patient acceptable symptomatic state. Patient factors, including age, sex, BMI, symptom duration, smoking, meniscal tear, lesion size, location, were not associated with the achievement of a clinically significant outcome at two years. Our two-year post-operative MRI demonstrated a mean of 40 in terms of our MOCAR 2.0 score. As you see here, two examples, one of the femoral condyle, one of the patella, showing excellent fill with quiet subcondyle bone. Only one patient failed with graft delamination at 9.5 months. That patient required arthroscopic debridement and actually did well after that debridement. It was an additional patient who complained of clicking and grinding and crepitus at 15 months. Now there are a number of limitations to this study. It is a relatively small sample size. We did have limited PRO compliance at two years. There was some heterogeneity across the board in terms of patient age and lesion location. And we only had 10 patients with two-year post-operative MRI, which was elective. But we did show significant improvement in all functional outcomes. We showed high rates of clinically significant outcomes at two years. There was a low failure rate and a low complication rate. Thank you very much.